Thank you so much, Burak, uh, for this. Uh, my name is uh, Chengo Masha, uh, the co-founder and CEO at Mosmos. Uh, so for those who will be hearing about Mosmos for the first time, ideally, we're a fintech based out of uh, Africa in Nairobi, Kenya. And um, we ideally provide, uh, or we offer a safe-to-buy solution that enables customers to pay for high-value products in very flexible and very convenient installments as they earn uh, cash rewards. Um, a little bit about uh, my background, I'm a second time uh, founder. Um, so my very first company was a consulting business where we were building uh, tech products and tech solutions for, uh, for other businesses. Uh, uh, we pick up customers uh, across uh, Kenya and uh, also outside uh, in some other, uh, some other markets uh, around that. Uh, how the idea of Mosmos uh, came to be or how uh, uh, we got to get started with Mosmos is the need for a very convenient way, uh, a, a very personal need uh, of a very convenient way for me to, to be able to achieve, uh, achieve my goals or uh, uh, get access to some of the high value products that I wanted. And um, I remember when I was looking at what are some of the options that I would, uh, I would want, Definitely, the first option was uh, credit, uh, but generally that had its own challenges where uh, you would now end up paying very high interest rate at the end of it all uh, and other inconveniences within that, uh, within that journey. And the second alternative was savings. And I was generally struggling with savings because at the beginning of the year, I'd come up with these lofty goals and lofty plans of, okay, uh, by the end of the year, I will have achieved one, two, three things. Uh, but then that doesn't get to be because after the third month, you're already derailed and uh, off track. So um, uh, we're thinking what is the best solution that can actually be able to uh, guide us or, or, or uh, ideally aid, aid, aid myself towards attaining some of these high value uh, aspirations that I had in a very convenient, uh, in a very convenient way. And um, in addition to now uh, looking at some of the different alternatives that are there, uh, being able to tie a goal to a particular item became very apparent to me because initially I discovered that what made me fail towards being able to acquire uh, or, or achieve a savings goal that I had was that I couldn't uh, very much visualize the end, uh, the end product. So when we're able to now uh, uh, Put a, a very clear vision at the end of the uh, at the end of the saving cycle, then it becomes much easier. And this is generally uh, this generally resonates with so many of our customers, where they are able to now see most most as a, a an assisted way to achieve their dreams, as opposed to a very difficult savings kind of like uh, objective that they might not be able to achieve at the end of the, at, at the end of it. Uh, You're on mute, Bura. You're on mute. Perfect. Sorry. So the culture is different and your solution is different. Uh, because as far as I know, there are very few similar products in Europe or US. Shiro, so what is the primary drive behind the most most inception? And in your own words, can you explain? Uh, what Mosmos is and unique value proposition in the African market. Yes, absolutely. As, as Masha has mentioned, what we essentially enable is for customers to save and buy uh, high cost ticket items. And, you know, when we started Mosmos, uh, we essentially uh, had geared this product towards um, customers who are who on a low income and would essentially want to buy high cost ticket items. But two years in, we've been able to see that this Mosmos is a product that also serves, you know, even the middle class and and, and customers who are earning, I, th I think what you would call a, 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 a good uh, sort of like end to end of month um, salary or income. Um, and so what we enable is one, to tie uh, a customer's uh, goal or objective um, and create a seamless process where, as Masha mentioned, when we started most, most one of his biggest challenges, and I would say mine too, is creating a lofty goal, say, as, at the time, uh, you know, as, as uh, sort of like, a, you know, just entered sort of the job market, want to buy myself a laptop. 
and I create that goal, say first of January, as we all do. Um, and then three months in, you've been diligent with your savings. And then, you know, things come up, um, life, uh, life, life happens. And uh, therefore, as you're saving, you're also slowly withdrawing from the same savings pot. And therefore, six months in, you have nothing to show. You feel you've been working very hard, but you've sort of been taking two steps forward and five steps back. Um, and so with most, most, we, we have a marketplace and we also partner with retailers where our customer is able to walk into a, a store and select an item and say, find this, I want a fridge because I'm moving homes. Um, we have a lot of, you know, um, customers who are sort of moving homes or building uh, and are interested in home appliances, furniture, construction material, you name it. And therefore, they identify an item and, you know, make the commitment towards buying the item. And so what most most provides is a flexible way for this customer to pay towards their item in a way that is friendly and matches their income patterns. So we have a broad range of customers. We have the customers who earn daily. We have customers who earn weekly and, you know, the typical end of month salary. And so across the board, what we see is that customers are able to match whenever they have their income. We have customers who pay almost every day. We have customers who pay once every two weeks and customers who pay at end of every Every month as their salary or you know income comes in um, and so we provide a way for customers to seamlessly pay towards this item in a way that is especially matches their income pattern such that the customer doesn't fall behind within their payments um, or doesn't feel too stretched um, and then towards instead of having a savings pot where you then withdraw and then go and make the purchase a uh, customer is paying towards most most and at the end of their savings or payments however you look at it the customer then gets the item in 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 in, in return so also that you know being able to connect the payments towards the reward which is the item is something that we've really been able to streamline and therefore a customer is you know every with every payment they're viewing a reducing balance rather than a goal where they're paying you know if they're paying a thousand dollars and they they're, they're looking at it as I have 99 you know 999 more dollars to go they're viewing it as a reduced balance so that is you know essentially the gap we've been able to fill the market and and personally as well I am also a most most customer uh, and so is my family and anyone else who will you know who, who will uh lend me a ear to hear about most most and and so that's what uh, that's the solution we're providing and we're seeing it work so, Masha, how will you differentiate with the save uh, to buy platforms, uh, the Mosmos? Uh, uh, sorry, Murak, just repeat the question. Uh, yes. So, how does the Mosmos will differentiate from other save to buy platforms? So, ah, okay. it's save to buy, not uh, <laughs> a different model, uh, especially. All right, so um, our, our model is called Save to Buy or also called Save Now, Buy Later, uh, which essentially means you put your money and then you get the, you get the reward at the end of your saving cycle. Uh, it's a little bit confused some other times with Buy Now, Pay Later, which is um, more of a credit, uh, a credit solutions, a credit solution where customers now are able to put, uh, pick up the item at the start of the process and then uh, pay out, uh, 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 pay out uh, uh, the, the rest of the balance now later on, plus an interest that has been charged from uh, uh, from the credit facility. So um, from our model, how we've been able to differentiate ourselves now, maybe uh, against other uh, self now buy later solutions or self to buy solutions, is um, we have a very uh, customer obsessed or customer centric approach where. We always, and, and, and this is something that we always try to, uh, uh, to solve every day, uh, customer pain points. How do we make it very easy? How do we make it very seamless for the customer? Uh, how do we make it very painless? Because saving in itself is a bit difficult. Uh, uh, having to, uh, having to, to set money aside from so many other competing needs and save towards something is already a very big task. So uh, the question that we always ask ourselves is now how are we able to ease this pain and just make it very easy for someone to enjoy actually saving and enjoy contributing or, or, or paying towards a, a, a dream that maybe might not be very uh, uh, might, might be a long term uh, might be a long term dream. So uh, what you've done is number one, we've created a very intuitive marketplace and offered very competitive prices. So uh, customers are able to save towards this uh, uh, whatever item they want at prices that are at least within the same um, uh, uh, with, uh, same as other retailers out there, or even sometimes much less because we've been able to, uh, over time we've been able to make some good partnerships with suppliers and we get this product at very affordable prices. So customers, number one, are able to sell. 
uh, uh, on, on the cost of the items that they want uh, that they want to purchase. So in addition to that, uh, again, we've made our app very intuitive uh, with very good timely reminders on how to make payments. We are able to uh, walk through the uh, walk through um, the journey with our customers in, in terms of visualizing uh, how much they have paid, how much is their balance, and how they can be able to uh, 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 to, to 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 hit these targets in a in a very timely fashion. Uh, and then ideally now, uh, on the other part of it is um, based on customer demand, we've been able to aggregate now very good brick and mortar stores. Uh, who have products that customers want. So uh, over the last uh, three, four months, we've been able to bring on board uh, uh, some top of the range uh, retailers uh, who are able to number one, now provide an extensive range of the products that maybe we might not be able to offer on our marketplace, uh, but also uh, provide a very uh, real time experience. So if customers maybe want to feel uh, or see how, how a product looks, they want to test it out, they want to try it out, they're able to do that. And then at the end of it now, um, uh, they're able to uh, sort of like now make that purchase uh, or, or make that savings decisions. Also on the pipeline, uh, we are, uh, and maybe we might maybe speak about this a little bit later, but now we're looking at how we can be able to create now a complete immersive experience where uh, as customers save, they're able to unlock even now uh, much bigger rewards from the value of the savings that they've done and be able to now create a very strong value proposition that customers are going to choose us as their home for all goal-based uh, settings. So um, should you, uh, Shiro, uh, op tell us more about the uh, upcoming plans? Yes, absolutely. So as Masha mentioned, um, we are especially working with our B2B uh, retail partners. Um, as 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 you as you know, we have an online marketplace where you know we acquire our own customers where they can shop, save, and buy. Uh, we also partner with uh, with retail partners with you know as Masha mentioned, brick and mortar stores, and especially this was driven by uh, both feedback from our customers. See, the higher the cost of item, um, the more there is a need to touch and feel the item. The customer wants to see, you know, is it a you know a, a gray fridge? Is it you know etc. There's various nuances um, that make the purchase decision easier when a customer. Can and see the product and so um, right now, our key focus is um, partnering with as many of these um, retailers um, as possible. That, especially, we've seen in the last you know uh, year, I would say, um, has has been great. Um, for increasing our brand awareness and also overcoming the challenge of trust. Um, as you can imagine for a fintech, uh, we are a savings platform. We are holding customers money. Um, one of the you know, biggest challenges is acquiring that trust. Do customers trust that you know, we'll keep their money and at the end of their savings, will they get an item in return? Great because that's that is overcome. The customer already knows the retail partner, therefore they're comfortable with any payment um, option uh, that, the, that the retailer provides. So that is one, uh, definitely one of our biggest, um, you know, goals that we have right now and are actively working on, um, expanding to as many uh, retail partners as possible. And in all various categories, um, you know, as I mentioned, uh, we, we are already in, you know, smartphones, home appliances, but we have other uh, verticals such as construction um, and, and uh, construction and, and, and home and living. Um, so that is, you know, furniture where we're seeing a lot of demand, um, as well as we are also getting into the service um, space. Um, so services being, you know, insurance, um, saving for education, saving for healthcare. Um, so those are some of the verticals that we are also trying to get into. Essentially, we're looking at most, most as, you know, if any, if this is a high cost, I would say, um, item or service that you need, and you therefore need to plan to purchase, then most, most, we want most, most to be one of the first um, you know, choices you consider or platforms you consider um, to then sort of walk the journey with you until you get the item or service that you you, you desire. Uh, Shiro, another follow-up question. So do customers push you buy now, pay later model? I mean, because <laughs> uh, save uh, and to buy is a long-term yes. perspective, but I mean, buying is instinctively, I mean, motivational. Most of the customers would like to buy now, now, uh, is there a later. push uh, from yes. the customers to change your model? Yes. Okay. So that's actually a, an interesting question. And we've also seen this change uh, a lot, I would say, even in the last, I would say, two years, this this and last year. Um, you know, to 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 customers leaning more towards save uh save to buy. So 
that we've also that one we've seen is the reason is uh, customers are becoming more cost conscious and and aware of interest uh, interest charges and what that actually means therefore you know when you walk into a store a customer um whereas you know even looking uh, you know a couple of months or years back uh, and they're very easily provided an option to buy now, walk away with the product and pay later. Um, customers would you would not be very keen to see, okay, what, what interest am I being charged? What is the total price of the product? You know, and once I'm done with my 12 month payments um, compared to if I was to pay, you know, upfront right now. And so with that increasing awareness of, um, you know, interest, um, interest costs, we are seeing a shift even both by customers and retailers um, to provide an alternative way for customers to pay, whereby we all, what we say, you know, with, with Masha, there are customers for buy now, pay later, where the item is urgent, they need it today, and they will get the item no matter what, at, at whatever cost. And that is fine. So that is ideally not the customer for most most. However, there's another segment of customers who, one, they are either price conscious. Uh, and so they do the math and they see, okay, they've paid an extra $300 for an item they don't necessarily need now. And given the time, they're happy to pay comfortably and receive the item. So that is a typical most most customer. And then secondly, there's also are uh, also a very sort of a large segment of buy now pay later customers who don't qualify um, for the credit checks right because often with buy now pay later there comes a quali pre-qualification where customers either you know due to a, a poor credit score or you know something that interrupts their qualification um or or, or interferes with their with their, with their pre-qualification that customer we also then provide an alternative way for them to pay for the item and uh, what we've seen also especially with our you know retail um, customers the ones who will walk into a store we often we give a 90-day payment period but these customers tend to go through their payments a lot faster because they had the intention of buying um, either they didn't have the full amount right now um, or they would prefer not to pay the full amount so then customers you know they're happy to give it three weeks four weeks and sort of pay comfortably um, and and, and not necessarily get into into purchase with credit or, or get into debt for um for for these types of high cost items so masha i know that uh, this model can be scalable what uh, which countries do you uh, plan to also implement the same model in africa because uh, kenya market will be probably in a long term be feel full with Mosmos are you going to plan also uh, to uh, go other markets um all right so um to answer that also like you can um, look at the nuances of uh, uh the type of customers that we serve uh, and essentially uh the type of customer that we've seen in Kenya is the same customer that uh, uh, is mirrored across all the other uh, all the other african countries and um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a financial product, essentially, there are also some, um, some things that come into consideration uh, in, in, in a way to look for, uh, as, as we look at uh, some other additional markets that we can get into. And number one would be um, ideally availability of um, uh, online, online payments. Like just now being able, because uh, our products, um, is very much automated in how it operates, where uh, as a financial product, if I make a payment towards whatever I need, I want that very instant uh, confirmation that my money uh, has actually been received and this is my balance. So that payment infrastructure of uh, uh, countries now that can be able to support that, uh, uh, which I'm happy to say that I think most of the, uh, most of the African countries already uh, have been able to um, uh, to have such robust uh, uh, payment uh, uh, payment offerings, um, and then uh, the other part of that also is um, in as much as we also offer uh, offline kind of uh, uh, onboarding processes where a customer would walk into a physical store and get onboarded. Uh, also, mobile penetration would be an easier way to be able to reach customers and mass where. Uh, you don't necessarily have to visit a physical store for you to be able to get onboarded wherever you are uh, uh, at home in the most remotest village you can still be able to uh, onboard yourself uh, do your savings and then be able to receive the item at the end of uh, at the end of the process so some of these uh, uh, infrastructure issues have uh, really been uh, addressed accordingly across different markets uh, and also now looking at um, some other similar products that have been working uh, that have been working not necessarily self to buy, but also like on the financial side and on the credit side uh, and on the savings uh, uh, on the savings side. 
So uh, to, uh, to, to now answer your question in terms of uh, countries that most most can potentially do well, um, definitely now we have a country like Nigeria that uh, in addition to its massive population, they have had some financial uh, products that have performed uh, extremely uh, extremely well. So I think that will be also an, a, a very interesting market, uh, a very interesting market to look at. And then now, in addition to that, we can look at the North, uh, um, uh, uh, North, North, North Africa, where we have predominantly a Muslim population. And um, uh, our product essentially, I would say, is halal in a way that we don't charge any fees or any interest uh, 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 over, over the period of the savings, uh, uh, of, the, of the customer savings journey. So basically that means uh, this will be a very good uh, a product for customers in the Muslim uh, uh, in the Muslim nations who want something that uh, will be convenient for them, efficient for them, but also will be in tune with whatever their uh, religious practices are uh, ideally ideally dictate. So uh, I think I think those are some of the uh, uh, of the most immediate countries that now we can look at, in addition to our brothers and sisters in East Africa. Yeah, that is Uganda, Rwanda, uh, Tanzania. Great. Shiro, yes. how has participating in the Antler program shaped your entrepreneurship journey? So how was your experience in Antler program? Yes, incredible. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, just maybe a bit of, a bit of background, I think it would help to, to, to give context. Um, I joined Antler because I was, I was previously working in, in same space, um, fintech and specifically in savings. And I was looking to now, you know, start my own venture at which point I, I knew of Antler and, you know, I applied and got into the program. And very shortly after I met with Masha, who was already building most Moses and was looking for a co-founder and given my background and my interest in this space and this specific type of product um then you know it was uh, a match made in heaven <laughs> so then uh, so so i would say um yes antla was extremely um you know pivotal um one uh, and and this is also you know feedback that i that i always share with peers who would like to know more about the antla experience um you know being in an environment with other founders um you know who are also looking to build um so you work in, you know in a very collaborative environment um you know having mentors uh you know who are you know the antla partners and and who are you know sort of constantly giving you um, feedback uh, on your product on what it is that you're working on on a weekly if not daily basis um, is very it was very helpful and then of course the antler network um, especially um, so once you know we 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 then pitched to to antler with uh, Masha with the idea of most most the the network um, came in very handy which is you know how we we're able to meet um, startup Istanbul and therefore yes I would say in in, in always it was a win 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 because you know one you have the you have the environment that enables you to 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 work on a product, um, you know, alongside other people within your cohort, um, the network which comes very much in handy, um, and also you know continually also as we're still building, uh, most most we're very much, um, in contact and and receiving feedback from from Antla who are very um sort of keen and invested in us building a successful product. So it is both pre idea and also post investment. You know that support is is very very important. Yeah. So Masha. But also, should you share me the experience with the Kenyan startup ecosystem? So it is probably a new ecosystem is building and how, how are the entrepreneurs and also startups and investors perspective? Um, all right. So uh, I get it's a very early stage kind of industry uh, where I think uh, predominantly businesses who are known to be the normal brick and mortar businesses where you start a shop, stock it, and then sell to, uh, to people across that. But I think um, right now, especially, um, I think the tipping point was uh, when M-Pesa, the M-Pesa product was, uh, uh, was taking off and uh, it was attracting a lot of um, uh, sort of like now interest from uh, parties across the globe. Um, and also uh, now things like now internet penetration uh, that basically made uh, the uh, the globe a very small uh, a very small village and exposed so many people uh, 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 to the industry. Um, so it's uh, it's quite in its early stages, but I think growing very rapidly over time. I think we've seen some very interesting companies that have come out of um, uh, out of uh, uh, out of Kenya. 
Uh, and uh, we are increasingly now seeing um, more founders, younger founders being bold enough to, uh, to start ideas and, uh, and be able to see how um, ideally everything now goes, uh, uh, goes from there. But also, I think participation from uh, global, global players, uh, uh, now like uh, Antla, for example, who have, be, uh, who have been able to set up a, a shop here, that kind of like now catalyzes the industry. And um, um, I think we are moving in the right. Uh, we are moving in the right direction. I think uh, we are attracting some um, some some very good uh, 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 some very good conversations from uh, um, uh, some of the established uh, uh, startup ecosystems like Silicon Valley or the United States in general, uh, the UK, Turkey with startup Istanbul, uh, and I believe uh, it's only up. Uh, it's only up from. So. Uh... Follow-up question regarding to ecosystem. Uh, how are, Shiro, how are the investors? Did you get rejections from the local investors? Do they understand also the technology and high impact uh, company building? Uh, or uh, still, uh, do they invest uh, real estate or other uh, types of tools? Yes. Um, so I think, uh, definitely, uh, you know, rejection is a part of the entrepreneurship journey. You can't, you can't really um, avoid that. And that is, you know, for various reasons, either the investor is looking to invest in, a, in, in, in something different or it's not, not the right time. Um, and, uh, but however, when it, when it comes to technology backed, uh, businesses, um, you know, right now, um, it is, it is, it is one, it is one, we are very, um, we're not very asset heavy. Um, and therefore, you know, with minimal investment, you can really make uh, an, an investor, angel investor can really make a difference in, in, in the company's sort of a lifetime uh, or lifeline. Um, therefore, we've seen more overwhelming um, support um, when it comes to technology backed businesses. Also now when it comes to local investors as well, um, you know, they understand the nuances and the kind of uh, product that we're building for the kind of market that we are serving. Um, so I would say generally, you know more positive um you know very interested in learning okay how can this technology be scaled how can we you know sort of grow even faster uh you know we are majorly serving um the, the urban cities in kenya how can we get to you know sort of very rural um and really sort of the, what we call the underserved communities so i would say majorly it's been uh yeah a lot of support but of course you know with a uh, rejection yeah for, for various reasons uh but i would say there's a, a good understanding of technology-backed businesses such as our Hours. And also what helps is also seeing success stories, right? Um, so Masha has mentioned um, M-Pesa, which is not new to, to any of us. Um, however, even, you know, a lot of successes within the fintech space and, and other fintech solving various other problems being successful. And that also gives investors, you know, confidence. So Masha, what is a day uh, in your life look like at Mosmos? What is a typical day? I wake up at 1 a.m. and meditate. <laughs> <laughs> Cold shower at 3 a.m. Exactly. Yeah. Run by five. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, I think a uh, pretty uh, normal day, but intense. I think uh, being this early stage, that means I think uh, founders are still very much doing everything. Um, so uh, it's, it's, uh, it's right now, and now at least now we can be able to. Uh, bring in a team, be able to uh, delegate a few responsibilities, but I still that day-to-day -day active involvement is still very much uh, is still very much there. So um, core priorities for the day, uh, usually for me, is just um, uh, being able to, uh, uh, to assess uh, uh, ideally our tech, being able to now see, okay, this is where we are, this is how we can be able to make things better, and this is uh, made possible with constant feedback from customers. So um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our product uh, uh, first, uh, is, um, uh, is, is actually a two-pronged kind of like approach where we have the B2C model where we reach out to customers directly. And then we have the B2B model where uh, 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 we enable brick and mortar businesses to be able to uh, offer this payment solution to their customers. All these two models are, 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 are very tech heavy and basically, uh, now being able to aggregate feedback, being able to see, okay, what can be a priority point here? Uh, how, what, what next can we be able to build in order to be able to streamline uh, the processes? So I think that is the first thing that um, 
uh, takes up uh, a little bit of time. Uh, generally also now uh, being able to um, also like oversee the operations end of it. Uh, now, because after, after the customers have been able to uh, complete their savings, their deliveries that need to be handled, their supplies ideally maybe need to be paid. So just ensuring that everyone is happy within that uh, space where now uh, deliveries are able to reach customers on time because we promise a 24 hour delivery period and then being able to see, okay, are there any issues within the flow? Can we be able to improve and make things more seamless and uh, uh, easier uh, uh, for, for both customers and partners? And uh, generally, uh, as uh, maybe whenever, whenever possible, assist in one way or another within business development, uh, which is now Shiro's uh, uh, forte on that. Shiro. I mean, what has been the most surprising lesson you learned in your uh, so far entrepreneurship journey with Mosmo so far? Um, most surprising is um, I would say uh, the 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 I I think actually from a personal perspective the attitude towards challenge. Right. Um, it's very, from my experience, um, you know, the, the attitude towards challenge is very different. Say, you know, if you're part of a team as an employee um, versus, you know, being an entrepreneur. Um, and, you know, as, as, you, as you probably know, Burak, um, yeah, entrepreneurship is basically endless challenge solving. Right. It's one after the other. Um, and so I think, you know, what, uh, you know, from, a, from an outsider perspective or even before I took the plunge and, uh, you know, decided to just go for it and, and, and see if I would build it always you know seemed very daunting and you know you look at your you know bosses at the time and you wonder like how how are they dealing with this day after day day after day there's always a crisis to be managed um however being in it now it's the the the, the attitude of perspective is really towards opportunity because essentially the, the 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 perception is that failure is not an option therefore how do we solve this how do we solve this most efficiently quickly um and and yeah i think that has been the most uh, the most uh, sort sort of surprising i guess it's 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 a good thing um yes because any 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 challenge we, me and masha almost jump at you know when you're having our either daily check-ins or you know monday check-ins um you know sort of this came up last week how however how can we how can we solve it oh i had this idea and i had this idea so so very very rarely have we've been faced with something where me and Masha have basically just looked at each other and we're like, okay, we, we have absolutely no idea, no idea what to do. So I think that has been, that has been very, very positive. However, I say this now, we're two years into building. Maybe let's talk about it in, uh, in, in another seven years and, and let's see how, how proactive we are towards challenges or maybe, you know, we have gray hair and <laughs> we're tired, but, uh, but for now that's been, uh, that's been, yeah, that's been, that's been probably the most surprising. Yeah. 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 I hope not. Uh, yeah, so no, 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 no. Sure. Masha. For example, two years, if you go back in time, two years, when you were just starting in the Mosmos, what advice would you give to yourself? Are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> 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 yeah, so, um, uh, but, but, but ideally, um, I would, um, what I would tell myself at that period is um, focus on the problem. Because I think, over time, uh, uh, and, and we spend a lot of time romanticizing the solution, being able to ensure that maybe you've packaged something in this particular way, uh, this is how you're presenting it to the customers. And most of the time that actually doesn't work. Even like in some of our own internal experiments that we run over time, we always like, okay, here's an idea that we can, idea, we can maybe uh, push it out to customers and see how it works. And then most of the time, it doesn't necessarily work how we had uh, uh, envisioned it on our, on our head. So being able to uh, uh, have some very ruthless focus towards the problem, understand it, and empathize uh, with the customers, once that, has been, uh, once that has been addressed, now it's much easier to even build a solution. And once uh, you've been able to put a solution out there, customers now will be able to easily adopt and easily move forward. So that is kind of like now, um, the thing that also stays uh, uh, stays with me, stays with us uh, every other day of, uh, are we, uh, as, as, as we iterate on the product, as we introduce new solutions, are we looking at what the customer problem is? Are we addressing it sufficiently? And if we check it as right, then I think that is, um, 
uh, uh, that is a plus for us. So, Masha and Shiro, thank you for sharing your insights and experiences with us. Thank you very much uh, for joining uh, this podcast. Thank you as well. Thank you so much. A pleasure, Burak. Uh, yes, and, and look forward to, to the next one. And, and perhaps if I could add on to the question that you just asked, Masha, on what I would tell myself, uh, uh, you know, two years ago starting, starting this is patience. Um, and this is 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 a lesson that <laughs> that uh, I think yeah, Masha and I, and especially you know, we're we're both in business development, and and now focusing also a lot of of our time on on B two B conversations, and they really take time, right? You will start conversations with a partner, you know, every every I think every meeting it seems like that's the one. The contract is being signed at the next meeting, you know. Now we're we're almost there, and three months in, you know, it's still sort of like dragging, and 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 the conversation is still continuing um and so i would say patience and persistence um especially you know within business development within sales uh which is what i spend most of my time doing just that persistence and when you see an opportunity and and you've gotten to the place you know with with a potential lead where there's there's a there's a you know there's a match between challenge their challenge and your solution just you know keep with the persistence but especially exercise uh, exercise patience yes that's what i would say <laughs> it's always a pleasure uh, to meeting both of you. Thank you very much, Masha and Shiro. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Burak. Really appreciate this. Bye bye.